166 million years ago, during the Middle Jurassic, a beast of a carnivore was experiencing its heyday. It was one of the largest theropods to live during the Middle Jurassic and was mighty enough to earn a name which meant Great Lizard. This was the Megalosaurus. And it truly was a Great Lizard, and not just because of its physical traits. The Megalosaurus was actually the first genus of dinosaur to be validly named. This also means that this dinosaur has long been on paleontologists' radar, in fact with the earliest fossil belonging to this genus being discovered all the way back in the 1600s, being unearthed in the Tainton Limestone Formation, located in present day UK. The first bone to be dug up was the lower part of its femur, and because scientists back then had no knowledge of dinosaurs, it was originally believed to belong to a Roman war elephant, and then was switched having come from a biblical giant. This belief persisted for a considerable amount of time until the early 1800s when new fossils were located and delivered to paleontologist William Buckland, who with the help of fellow paleontologists deduced that it was really a massive lizard-like animal, which he estimated to have been about 40 feet or 12.2 meters in length, while standing 8 feet or 2.4 meters tall. And finally, in 1824, Buckland formally named and described the Megalosaurus. And even though his take on the Megalosaurus was more accurate than previous descriptions, he still got a lot wrong, which is reflected in his reconstructions and descriptions of the beast. Buckland believed the Megalosaurus was a lizard-like quadruped that was also amphibious, being able to traverse land and sea. Not to mention, he also increased his size estimate on the dinosaur, stating that it was 33% larger than his first estimate. Additionally, you could tell the Megalosaurus was a carnivore due to its teeth shape, and being the religious person he was, he claimed the Megalosaurus served the biblical role of ending the lives of old and ill animals, in order to, in his words, diminish the aggregate amount of animal suffering. This understanding of the Megalosaurus did not stay around for long, as more fossils of the dinosaurs were eventually uncovered. And even before the end of the 1800s, paleontologists had deduced that it was likely bipedal, and it was not as large as originally thought. And throughout the 1900s and early 2000s, even more specimens would be located, with one location yielding 103 bones alone. And thanks to these finds and the improvement of the general understanding of dinosaurs, knowledge about the Megalosaurus is of course much better now than it was when it was first described. As of today, there is only one true Megalosaurus species, Megalosaurus bucklandi. Although other species have been proposed, none of them have been universally accepted due to the lack of fossil evidence. And the Megalosaurus bucklandi has also suffered from this lack of fossil evidence because despite the considerable amount of specimens found, there is still a lot more of it missing, with the vertebrae and skull bones being extremely scarce, meaning that its physical appearance is not quite certain. Yet, in 2010, a paleontologist reconstructed the Megalosaurus using all known body parts, leading to a rough idea of what this magnificent creature looked like. The reconstruction depicts the Megalosaurus as a carnivorous theropod that was medium to large size, being between 6 meters, or 20 feet, and 9 meters or 30 feet in length, while weighing about 1 ton, making about the same weight as a European bison. Although this meant it wasn't as large as some of the most famous theropods like T. rex or Spinosaurus, it still made it one of the largest middle Jurassic theropods to exist. Additionally, studies on its bone formations indicated that it was quite robust and would have been heavily muscled. Its skull in particular was exceptionally sturdy, as the limited finds of skull material show that it was unusually large for its body and thus in an extremely powerful mouth that could deliver vicious bites. Its mouth was also equipped with long dagger-like teeth that could easily tear through the flesh of its prey. The Megalosaurus also had its arms to use, which, although being relatively short, were stout and strong, and likely possessed three digits. It's been speculated the Megalosaurus may have used these robust arms to grip prey, or perhaps slash at them, inflicting rapid cuts. Meanwhile, its legs, while also being well built, were not as robust as the legs of some of its relatives, like the Torvosaurus, to which the Megalosaurus was closely related. Both of these two theropods belong to the family Megalosauridae, aptly named after the Megalosaurus. This family included nine members, all of which were quite primitive when compared to later theropods and were characterized by lower and longer schools. They also had a wide distribution throughout the Earth, however the Megalosaurus itself solely inhabited present-day England. Other proposed species of Megalosaurus have been found outside of England, yet none can be confidently referred to as Megalosaurus. 166 million years ago, England was drastically different than it was today, being lush and tropical, and the Megalosaurus lived in an area that appears to have been dominated by ferns and ginkgos. It was also situated close to the waters, and some Megalosaurus appeared to have lived on islands as well. 
Its habitat was extremely rich in life, which was also very diverse. Other dinosaurs that lived alongside the Megalosaurus included the sauropods Cardiodon and Cetiosaurus, as well as Stegosaurs. It's thought that the Megalosaurus preyed both on the sauropods and the Stegosaurs, yet despite its efficient weaponry, hunting wasn't always easy for the Megalosaurus, as fractured bones have been seen in Megalosaurus specimens that were likely inflicted by herbivores. Other theropods also coexisted with the Megalosaurus, specifically Iliosuchus, Cruxicaeros, and Streptospondylus. The latter two were similar in size to the Megalosaurus, however neither preyed on each other and they probably all had their own separate niches. Furthermore, the Megalosaurus is more common and widely distributed, indicating to paleontologists that it was the top dog of its time. And dinosaurs were not the only ones thriving in England during this time, as multiple fish, pterosaurs, insects, and cynodonts were also present. It's possible that Megalosaurus may also have hunted these non-dinosaur animals, yet no concrete evidence of this has been discovered. Yet. Overall, the Megalosaurus is truly an amazing and important dinosaur whose discovery is a monumental landmark in paleontology, and hopefully this animal starts to get the recognition it deserves and appear more in paleomedia.